we know beyond a doubt that he is indeed a great God. Come with me this evening to the word of God, recorded in the book of St. Luke, the second chapter. It is the Christmas story that we are so familiar with that we recite every year that reminds us again of God's goodness and his mercy and sending his son Jesus Christ to suffer and to die for us. And that Christmas story I would like to lift up for our here today a few of those verses, especially verse 13 and verse 14 of Luke chapter 2. We pray that you will remember those and remember the message of the angels, the same praise and glory to God. Luke chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. And it reads, And certainly there was with the angels a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. I want to talk with you today about the peace of God or the Christmas peace, that peace that God sent to this world on Christmas. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. All glory and honor be to our God, the God who sent, who loved us so that he decided to send his son Jesus Christ. In the fullness of time, what miracle took place, the greatest miracle upon earth, that God delivered his promise that he made some 700 years ago to the prophet Isaiah. We hear the prophet Isaiah declare that his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Yes, not only that, but we hear Michael declare that in a little town of Bethlehem, though it's very small, shall come the Prince of Peace. On that great Christmas night that we celebrate, the angels singing, not only just one angel, but the Bible said a multitude of the heavenly hosts say glory to God in the highest on earth peace goodwill. Peace is, peace is one of those things that we seek out of. One of the things that is, is peace. We seek out of that peace in our home, in our life. We hear people say, I just want peace. And a lot of times elude us or slip away from us. And especially during the year 2000. We know that it has been difficult to hold on to that peace or that peace. When we have seen loved ones pass and go on, but things are different in our lives, when we have had maybe the, the, the virus and all of this, we question, where is this peace? This peace that God promised us the world. Yes, even now, many and you are going through trouble and heartache. So you may be asking, where is this peace? But we hear today the angels, as the shepherds were there in their field watching by night, we find the angels in the heavenly host, not only just one angel, but all of the angels of God singing glory to God. And we as God's people should join in with them to sing praise to the almighty God for the wonderful things he has done. In our lives. Yes, peace sometimes is difficult to find. In the, our home, maybe there are disturbances. We may hear people say, I am tired and weary and I just want some peace. And we seek for peace in the wrong place. There are those who will no doubt are trying to find peace, maybe in the bar. We probably say, well, I'm going to get away from it all and get me a little peace and we'll grab our bottle, bottle and we go seeking that peace. 
But I tell you, there is no everlasting peace there. We may seek peace, no doubt, <coughs> by going in a secret place someplace, getting away from a moment from the troubles that are harassing us. You say, I'm getting away from all of it, and I want to find peace. But there is no lasting peace in that. We may find peace in a little while, but that peace will soon be gone when we find ourselves back in the same situation. Now those that may pick up the drug habit and they say, I'm going to get me a little smoke and find me some peace. And we find out when that is all over, we are back in the same place, the same trouble. Maybe even greater. Because perhaps maybe we'll spend up money that we should have spent elsewhere at place. We find ourselves and there are those in our world today as we look around, there is no peace. And for those who no doubt have watched any of Mama, uh, watch uh, Perry Tower shows, you'll find that uh, this lady, I can't think of her name, is slipping right now. Mud deer, there you go. <laughs> we think of mud deer and saying, yes, I got my peace. And she'll pull out her gun. And we find that there are many in the world today that are using that as a peace. When we think of all of the shooting and the killing that are going on, those people are all are looking for some type of peace. We know that there is no peace in all of that. But where does the real peace come from? Listen as our text tells us today that the angels saying to them, Glory to God in the highest, for on earth peace, goodwill towards men. It was at the fullness of time, at the very right time, that God decided to send peace into this world wrapped in the form of humanity, in the form of a little baby born in Bethlehem. There the peace came. Born as a little baby, and we may say, well, a little baby, what kind of peace that he will bring? But the writer down through the history have proclaimed that he would rule forever and ever, and he would be the Prince of Peace. Isaiah declared that he would be not only just the Prince of Peace, but he would be the wonderful counselor, and he would be the mighty God, the God with all power and might, that he would be the Father of all, the everlasting and the Prince of Peace, the Prince of all peace that people are seeking. And note here that where did this peace come from? God is sending this peace to the world. So what it says to us today that we will not be able to find this peace and things in the world. Worldly things. You will not find this peace no matter how much you seek. But this peace come, that peace that Paul said that surpasses all men understanding comes from Jesus. Listen what Jesus says about it. He said, my peace I give you. And my peace I give you. It is a peace that is given to us. Nothing that we can buy. Nothing that we can own. It is a peace coming from God. God the Father who set this peace in the form of his son, Jesus Christ, who is the Prince of Peace. The way that we obtain this peace is by believing in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We accept him as our personal Savior, then we receive this peace that surpasses all men understanding. No trouble all around us, heartaches and disappointment, everything going haywire. You will find peace when you have Jesus Christ in your heart and mind. Jesus comes into this world to bring peace Peace in a troubled world. We know that our world today is still troubled. There's fighting, there's war that is going on. There's fighting that is going on, not only afar off, but nearby. There's fighting going on in our cities and in our homes. There's fighting and disturbance going on. 
But Jesus comes to break in to give us this peace. And he says to us, whosoever believeth and accept me, you will have this peace. Notice it says, this peace to all men. It is available for all, not just for some, but it is to the murder, to the homosexual, to all. This peace is available to mankind. But then we must receive it. We receive it and believe it. By believing and accepting this peace, then we have peace in our lives, peace in our home. So this Christmas peace is a peace that God brings to every mankind. For unto you, the writer says, Luke say, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. A Savior who will save us from our sins, from everything in our lives. He will save and deliver you. All oh, this peace is for all mankind. This salvation is for all mankind. But think of the thousands and the millions of people who will not accept this peace. But how do they get this peace? And here's where we come in as God's people. We are to share this peace with them. It is nothing that we should keep on our, ourselves, but we are to share it. We sing one of those hymns that's so, fam so familiar to us. Go and tell it on the mountain. Go and tell it everywhere you go. Go and tell it. What are you to tell? That Jesus Christ is born. That there is peace and salvation for you. This is the message that we have as Christians, as believers. Not only that we are to tell it. But we are to, to demonstrate it. We are to show it in our lives, the way we live. So many people today that say, yes, I believe in Jesus. I have him as my Savior. But their lives do not demonstrate that. Once we leave the church, we go and we in terms of a curse and swearing and doing everything that everybody out there in the world is doing. That does not lift Jesus up or tell the world that Jesus have come to save them. And people look at us who are Christian, who say that we believe and believe in Jesus, and yet we are not living that life ourselves. But how do we live it? It is not a thing that we can do on our own. But here God again is sending us that peace. He decided that he would not leave us comfortless. But it said that I will send you the Spirit, the Holy Spirit that will teach you all things. The Holy Spirit that will enable you to live a life. The Holy Spirit that lives and dwells in us must be able to say to us, you are not supposed to do this. That Holy Spirit that lives and dwells in us will tell us and guide and direct us. Yes, the Spirit of God. This is that peace. We talk about the world today that those of us who are Christian, we say, that, well, they have taken Christ out of Christmas, or we have taken that peace out of Christmas. But no one can take that peace out of Christmas. No one can take that peace out of Christmas. I'll say it again. Because God has sent his son to, in this world to deliver peace to all mankind. But when we fail to believe and accept that peace, then we ourselves in turn fail to receive the greatest gift that God has given to us. That peace is still there. It will always remain for we hear the writer said that he will rule forever and ever. So Christ's peace is always here. It is a matter of accepting that peace and sharing that peace one with another. On this Christmas, my prayer for all of you, that the peace of God will dwell supreme in your hearts. That it will start first in your hearts. And by being in your hearts,
Jesus living in your heart. It will also be in your house and that it will reign supreme in your house and from your house to your city or wherever you work, a place that you go, that that peace will abide in you and people will see and know that you have the peace of Jesus that abide and live and dwell in you. It is available. It is available for each and every one of us. That's why Jesus died and rose again on that cross. And that's why he promised that I will never leave you, but I will be with you. That same peace. Do you want that peace? I believe that some I'm speaking to here today, that there's turmoil and trouble in your heart. There's turmoil and trouble in your home. There's turmoil and strife on your job. But then that peace can be within you. Even though there be turmoil and strife on the job or in your home, you can have this peace. Listen to what the Apostle Paul says about it. That surpasses all men understanding. And they will wonder what is going on. Why are you so calm and cool and why are you so relaxed? Why are you not up in the air worrying about this and worrying about that? But you will be able to share with them because I have the peace of Jesus in my heart. The hymn that we sung, Peace Like a River, Peace Like a River, it is told about the writer of that hymn that his family was on a ship his wife and daughters, and there the ship had trouble and they went overboard and they died, his daughter and wife and all died. And he dare sit down and wrote that song. It is well with my soul. Peace like a river. They tell me that when he was going over to find out and they stopped at the place where the ship went down and he stopped they remembered here and gave thanks and praise to God even in the middle of the turmoil that was going on in his heart. Peace like a river oh my soul that we are able to say it is well it is well with my soul yes my brothers and sisters when you have that peace that peace you will be able to say that is well with my soul no matter what is going on, you can declare that as well with my soul. A woman that asks, us, they ask, how are you doing? She said, well, if you ask me, I have pains and aches all over, or arthritis, but all of that, but if you're talking about my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul. My brothers and sisters, every child or to be able to declare that it is it is well with my soul. No matter what chance of trouble, sickness, or whatever, it is well with my soul. Because I have the peace of God that surpasses all my understanding. We too should join in the angel glory to God in the highest, but we human or to be singing glory to God in the highest for you see God didn't come to save the angels but he came to this earth to save men this is why the angel says peace on earth good will towards men it is us that God came to suffer and die on an old rugged cross to save and we too should sing glory the God in the highest, for his peace have come to me. Amen and amen. amen. May the peace of God that surpasses all men understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. amen. We hear those words every time we have a sermon. First time we hear those, may the peace of God that surpasses all men understanding Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That's what God peace will do.
Keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.